kind of a cloudy overcast day here in Matcha today which is kind of unusual because uh, well no it's not unusual because we are kind of getting into our our summer season here which means more humidity more cloudy days a little warmer temperatures but that's not the purpose of this video I just want this is going to be another short q and A. I've got an email from one of our subscribers Pedro He's a, a, a regular subscriber and a regular contributor and in, 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 uh, leaves nice comments and sends me emails once in a while. I always has some great questions. And as soon as I come back, I'm going to get started on it. Hey! Hello there. So Pedro says... Uh, let's see here. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-one, and one. It's a pretty good question. Some of these questions, Pedro, I literally just cannot answer. Man, I'll explain it as I get get to them. But anyway, Pedro starts off uh, with. Uh, is this same level? I can't stand. You know, it, it has to be perfect. It looks to me like my camera's not level. Now I'm on the level. Okay. Hello, Don. We continue to enjoy your channel. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dude, I just love this audience. But uh, we love Ecuador, yet we've only spent time in the mountains. As a gringo who has resided in Ecuador's coast for well over a year, talking about me, uh, you've done an excellent job communicating petty theft is very real in Ecuador. Yeah, that's true. It is still very real. You've also shared some basic common sense points such as not inviting beggars into your domicile. Thanks for sharing the real world with us. Would you be able to offer your personal thoughts and Ecuadorian experiences to apply to the following questions? So here we go. Uh, number one dash A. Uh, what have you found to be the best technique to make a cash payment while standing? The first time I read that, I thought, what? I don't understand this question at all. But then I read part B. It said, I typically travel with a wallet in my front pocket and have never been robbed. I realize every time I remove my wallet, I'm a potential target and try to get my wallet back into my pocket quickly. Do you feel it's more secure to pull out cash using a money clip or a wallet, please elaborate your ideas. Well, I got this to say about that. I, in the first place, I don't carry a wallet, all right? I absolutely do not carry a wallet. I carry, I just carry my, my a little bit of folding money. I've just folded over my Cedula, my Mega Maxi discount card, but probably the most important card in my pocket, uh, my uh, medical information card that in case somebody finds me laid out on the street you know they can see what my blood type is and who my uh, uh, you know emergency contact information is and all that kind of stuff and that's really about it I don't carry any credit cards I do have a debit card my local JEP debit card that I carry in my pocket I don't carry a wallet and I'll tell you the reason why I don't carry a wallet for years years I carried a wallet and for years and years I had low back pain off and on and I went to a chiropractor in Austin Texas and and told him you know and and, and he he asked me do you where do you keep carry a wallet and sure enough I did I had one just about normal size about that thick and he says, stop carrying it. Get it out of your back pocket. Because cause I spent most of my days sitting down on, on my butt. And he said, get that out of your pocket and your problems will go away. Well, guess what? He was right. So I don't carry, I've never have carried a wallet since then. I've always kept a money clip in my front pocket. And it's actually safer. Now, as far as being here in Ecuador, when you're in a place, you know, the most important thing that you can do for you the most important thing is to be aware of, of what's going on around you. Don't pull out. And number one, don't carry lots of cash on you. Even though this is a cash-based society, more and more people are taking debit cards and credit cards. But still, you're going to need cash in a lot of places you go. And just 
don't pull out a wad of cash and sit there and, you know, do that number with it. Be very discreet about it. Make sure, you know, look around you. And, you know, and if you, I mean, I've even been able to reach in my pocket and just grab some of my cash out without bringing all of it, like a $20 bill or something, you know. Just be discreet and be aware of your of who's around you and what's around you. You know, and I'll tell you what, if you have any doubt whatsoever about whether you're safe or not, leave your money in your pocket and go somewhere else. Okay? That's, I mean, that's the way I do it. You know, I, I, I don't, there are places here in Monta that you definitely don't want to go with, like, a nice watch, you know, on your wrist. This watch here is given to me by a dear friend. It's an Invicta. It's big, it's heavy enough to use for exercise. I could probably build up some pretty beefy arms, especially my left arm, if I just did that number with that watch on, but I don't ever wear it out in the public. There are places here that you don't want to, you know, wear nice stuff like that, and you damn sure don't want to have a wallet on you. You want to keep your cell phone in your front pocket, because the pickpockets are, are, they're professionals here. I mean, they will get you, and they'll get you fast, and you will not know it. So, I hope that answers your question, Pedro. I'm not so if you have any more questions about that or any more of these questions, just drop me an email like you did with this one. The second question, if your current landlord approached you and explained she had a property in Monta where you could transfer your current lease and pay $150 less monthly to reside in a seemingly, no, in a similarly sized and outfitted freestanding home on the beach, equal or better view, would you consider this? Me personally, no, I wouldn't. There, there are a few places like that all up and down the coast. They're uh, up in Kanoa, which is north of Bahia. Notice the correct pronunciation of Bahia. A lot of people want to say Bahia, but it's actually Bahia because the H is silent, Bahia, B-A-H-I-A. But north of Bahia is a community called Kanoa. Fishing village, you know, coastal town. Lots of Americans have gone there and bought property and built nice little houses for sixty, seventy thousand dollars, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And they're like a block away from the beach, and they're sitting there on their little, you know, land. But you know, in the crowded communities like here in Monta, all the houses are packed right next to each other, and some of them share the same walls. Um, I, if my landlord said, I mean, to answer your question, no, no, no I wouldn't. I, I, I like being in the building where I have guards that watch my apartment and they watch the people that are coming and going. And if people here get unruly and out of, out of control, they get their ass kicked out of here. We got one guy here in this building I'm in. I don't know if he knows it yet, but his lease is not going to be renewed at the end of the month. And that's good news for a lot of us because he's a real... Uh, I wouldn't say he's a troublemaker, but he just, he's just, he's, well, he's trouble. <laughs> That's as far as I'm going to go with that. But based upon the excellent security video you shared, if the landlord stated she already contracted this security team to keep an eye on the home, and this was included in the price, would this be enough to change your opinion? There is a, you know, I did a video a while back about ultimate security and you can hire them they can come out and put security cameras on your property I mean it's very in, very inexpensive very affordable and they can monitor your property and they can speak to anybody that's walking up on your property through a loudspeaker system that's very effective and it's worked for a lot of people but still me by myself I don't think I would do it if I had a roommate a male roommate I might consider it I, I just don't feel, I don't get a warm and fuzzy feeling about it. I wouldn't do it. I know people in the highlands that live on standalone lots and standalone houses, and they're perfectly happy up there with them. But there are some areas around the country where you would be advised not to do that because of security issues. 
So to answer your question, no, I wouldn't. Thank you, Pedro. Number three, having visited Coenca, if you were to move for a year, what neighborhoods do you think you might consider outside of Ordinez Lasso? Well, Ordinez Lasso is, isn't really a neighborhood. That's a street. That's a, a major street that comes through. Coenca kind of comes in from, uh, let's see, the northern, north. Uh, Coenca runs kind of east and west. It, it, if it's oriented, kind of not exactly east and west, but kind of at an angle. North from Coenca is like right in the center of the city. Think of Coenca as stretched out like that, you know. It's not like this, where this is north and this is south. I'm watching my monitor to get this right. But anyway, you know, from the uh, western side, Ordinance Lasso comes in on the western side, goes right through Cuenca. But Gringolandia is the place where I was at. There is a, another neighborhood that's fairly close called Puertas del Sol. There is another neighborhood that's on the eastern side of town, and now I can't think of the name of it, but when I edit this video, I'll put it right here, okay? And the name of the community, the neighborhood is another, probably the most second most popular expat destination in Cuenca. Um, the historical district, there's a lot of expats that live down in the historical district. You can get rentals down there for pennies on the dollar. And if it wasn't for probably some of the potential noise, I, I would live down there. Just to be down there amongst all the activity and all the shopping and the restaurants. Oh my God, and you're close to the university area. And it's like, and even more importantly, it's fairly close to a McDonald's. Don't forget that, okay? So, number four, have you ever had a beggar purposely move themselves to block your walking path? in a tight spot. If so, how did you handle this? Uh, I didn't have a beggar, but I sure had a guy wanted my GoPro camera, kind of got in my path, and there's a video about it where I said, am I about to get robbed? I haven't had any beggars, you know, bother me or follow me. I know it happens. And, you know, the best thing to do when you get approached by a beggar, the way I do it, okay, because you, folks, you know I don't like to give advice. The way I do it, if a beggar approaches me on the street and they're selling candy, I don't know that they're a beggar, but I, I will always, I usually almost always buy some candy from them, and I probably don't even take the candy most of the time. Give them a dollar. I've had beggars, when I was doing the interview on the beach the other day of uh, my good friends at Yarbrough's, the, a beggar approached us and was selling candy and I don't know that she was Venezuelan or Ecuadorian or American. I don't know. But she was selling lollipops and stuff, and she was, she was begging and selling at the same time. I, I, I kind of shooed her away, but then I called her back over, and I gave her a dollar. And she wanted to give me a lollipop, and I just said, go give it to somebody else, okay? So, but, I, you know, my recommendation is if you get approached by a beggar and then they become a little intimidating, get away from them as quickly as you can, even if you have to run, you know. You, you, a lot of these people, you know, they work the crowds. And so that means that there's people around and you can get away from them without any trouble. It really hasn't been a problem for me, Pedro. And I don't, don't expect it to be a problem for you either. But you're going to run into them. And the best way to deal with them is if you're going to give them anything, give them a quarter or a 50 cent piece or a dollar and then move on. Go on away. Don't respond to them. Don't, they'll, they'll, if they say something to you, just wave and go. Just go, okay? Keep on moving. That's the way I do it. He says... Have you ever felt a beggar intentionally tried to bait you into making it appear you made physical contact with them? No. Never heard of that happening. Uh, the problems that people have with beggars here is sometimes, like that idiot that I interviewed that came here that invited the beggars into his apartment because they wanted, the little girl wanted to go pee-pee. 
That's a very common tactic. Don't do that, folks. Don't fall for it. I don't care how sad or how cute the little girl looks. Say, no, lo siento, and then vamos. Get out. Tell them vamos. Okay. I'll go on to the next question. Did you know if ground psyllium husk, unflavored, is available and safe for sale in Ecuador? If so, would you be kind enough to add a photo as you did in your excellent celery video? <laughs> Boy, you wouldn't believe the crap I got from doing that video. Uh, Pedro, I went looking for it for you. It's not in Mega Maxi. I went down to downtown today and went to the one place in town it's called Toro Criollo. I have it written down here. You can see how it's spelled. I don't know if you can see it here, right here. The paper, if it'll focus on it, right there. Toro Criollo. That place is the place in Monte Ecuador, I've been told, okay, that if you can't find it anywhere else, they'll have it there in, in terms of bulk food, spices, beans, nuts, pasta, spices, spices, spices. I, and of course, I had sell it with me, and we're trying to figure out how to translate that in Spanish, and we, I don't know what she said, but she asked for it, and they basically said no. I, I take it that you're probably on a, maybe on a keto diet, and you, you use that to make bread. I think you can make keto bread with psyllium husk. I, I once upon a time was in on, on a keto diet, and now I'm on a, a new an improved diet called the eat all the shit you can diet and don't worry about it. Um, I, I got a feeling that you're probably going to have to just mule it here. You know, and then you may run into some problems at, at customs getting it through. They may want to charge you import fees on it, you know, but I so far, no, I can't find it here. And I would, if you just got to have it, bring it with you or have somebody bring it with you. Number six, how difficult is it to find an indoor pool in Monte or Cuenca? Though they're here. There is a couple big ones here in Monte. Google it. Just get on Google. Get on Google Map and do swimming pools. There's a lot of the big luxury apartment houses here have big pools. Ibiza has what looks like a, a big lap pool, you know. But you pay money to go there, you know. Here in Monta, we got a really big pool right out here. It's right over your shoulder here. It's called the Pacific Ocean. There's lots and lots of people that go swimming out here. There's swimming clubs that come out here and they swim out here. The water's warm, it's very comfortable, it's safe, and you got professionals with you the whole time you're there. Go swimming in the ocean out here. That's my advice to you. Oh, I said that word, advice. That's my recommendation. Number seven, are you familiar with any rentals which offer, which offer an indoor pool large enough to swim laps? Yeah, Ibiza, that's about the only one I know of. There are some new places coming out here that are going to have some big pools. They're not built yet, so stay tuned. Uh, you know, there's, it's hard to find information about stuff like that, but I just did a quick Google search, and I, they're, not, they're hard to find. People here swim in the ocean. In Cuenca, th there are pools there. There's swimming clubs. There's universities there. There are pools in Cuenca. You'll find them on Google, okay? Number eight, Don, I believe you've indicated you're taller than most men native to Ecuador. Boy, that's the truth. You don't have to be very tall to be taller than most of the men here, but there are some big guys here. Don't get that wrong. There are some tall Ecuadorian guys. I've seen some seven-footer Ecuadorian guys here. Uh, do you know if the corral or other store sells a slightly raised height toilet? Well, there's a toilet store here in the mall. I passed by it. It's not a toilet store. It's a kitchen and bath store. Really, I don't think it's a kitchen. It's mostly baths. It's bathtubs and toilets and sinks. And I see them. I see these toys you're talking about. They are they're readily available here. This this country is not that primitive, you know. They're, they're you can find them all several places here in Monte. Yeah, they're readily available here. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about the taller toilet seat. 
not the seat, the whole toilet itself is taller. Much easier for us older people to get on it and off of it. He said, a few years ago we had a toilet replaced and wish we had done so sooner. The extra height has been a huge positive difference. I agree with you about that. By the way, how's your foot doing these days? It hurts like hell. It's still, I'm getting used to it. I saw the surgeon yesterday and asking, you know, why does it get red sometimes? Why does it hurt? And he says, come on, man, you're old. And it's going to take at least eight weeks before you start seeing any improvement. He recommended that I wear tight-fitting shoes and just take it easy, you know. So it's doing okay. I can move my toe up and down and side to side. So that's it. That's uh. That's his questions, and the, I think these are good questions. And Pedro, like I said, if you have any more questions, you know, send, send me an email. And uh, this video, as I try to do with all my videos, will have sub Spanish subtitles. So in, in case you don't know, a lot of folks have asked me about Spanish subtitles. I don't do these subtitles myself. I get them out of Google. I get them out of YouTube, and but it takes a, a couple hours after I post a video. It takes a couple hours for YouTube to even transcribe even the English part, so that you can have, you know, subtitles for it. But then I have to go back in and turn on Spanish subtitles and add it as a language. And sometimes I forget. I forget to do it. It might be a couple of days before I remember it. Pedro has been very patient with me and reminding me uh, if you know to please turn on Spanish subtitles because he has a multilingual family and he's also very thankful and grateful and as am I for your kindness and your uh, gentle nudges that you give me to get me to turn it on so that's it for this video folks I will have some more I'm working on some content for some other stuff I've got a video that I'm going to do within the next couple of days about an insurance program here for you drivers that's free. Okay? So, from Monte Ecuador, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.